Hey folks, it's Ray at DCAmerica.com here. And that entire intro that you saw right there was shot on this drone just a few hours ago, in fact, completely autonomously. And it was using DJI's active, tr well, actually not using active track because technically speaking, this drone doesn't have it. Technically, uh, but under the covers, it actually does. In fact, what powers the quick shots is ActiveTrack. You'll notice it's exactly the same as other DJI drones, except without the ability to keep on tracking forever and ever. Now, the reason for that is somewhat simple. There are no obstacle avoidance sensors on the Mavic Mini. It's probably the biggest disappointment actually for me on this drone because every other DJI drone made in the last four years has had obstacle avoidance sensors. So without those sensors, DJI is understandably a bit afraid to go ahead and have this thing follow you and then eventually just plonk itself into a tree but in the right scenarios it'll do those moves for you as part of the four quick shot moves those four moves being the droney orbit rocket and helix now each one of those moves does a different thing and if you've seen quick shot moves in the past you know that they're somewhat limited primarily in time each of those moves last about 15 seconds give or take and they go ahead and they have a starting point and an ending point and you're along for the ride but if you get creative enough, as you just saw there, you can actually tweak what that ride looks like, quite literally in my case. For the most part, it takes a lot of finesse. And by finesse, I mean trial and error. For example, this afternoon, I probably did about 30 shots uh, to get that intro right there. So a lot of trial and error, but once you figure it out, once you figure out what this thing wants to do and doesn't want to do, then you can go really quickly through the shots that you want and nail every single one, usually on the first take. And of course, about now you may be saying to yourself, but you know what, why don't I just get something like the Skydio 2 or whatever the case is that does autonomous tracking. And for that, absolutely, I totally agree with you, whether it be the Mavic 2 or the Skydio 2, anything other than this for continuous autonomous tracking makes a lot of sense. But if you just want a couple seconds of B-roll in between other shots that you've got, then you can pull it off with this drone right here if, again, you know how to do it. So with that, let's just jump right into the footage and right into the controller side of things. Now keep in mind, you're looking at the screen recording so the quality isn't quite as good. Don't worry, I'll show you the full res stuff in just a second. Within the quick shot menu, I went in here, I just selected the circle option and we're gonna to rotate to my left. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to find myself and make a square around myself. I was too far away. So that's usually the good indicator that you wanna be a bit closer, which I know sounds obvious, but I found the optimal distance is just the point where that dot shows up, right? So right there, go ahead and tap myself, which is using the underlying after track technology to find me as an object, a recognizable thing. I hit the go button, it starts to count down. I find that giving a couple extra seconds works best. You'll see the percentage till completion on the right hand side there. So you see it's starting to increment up. And so far so good, we're, we're kind of slowly getting going here. The drone's moving, I'm moving, it's following me. Life is grand. But you'll see it's starting to get me a little bit closer to the edge of the frame and then boom, this shot is over. And the reason is it's trying to create that circle and it's mapped that kind of center point and I'm moving outside of that. And if we go ahead and change the direction that we're trying to track, you'll see that it basically has the same problem. In this case, I go ahead and I start moving and very quickly I get out of frame as soon as I start pedaling here. So give it a second, there we go, start pedaling. And I start moving, the drone is moving just like before. And then all of a sudden it's just gonna simply turn to the left and say, you know what, I, I can't go beyond my center point of that circle. So thus, all roads tend to lead to Droney instead is the best option of the quick shot menu. And you'll see why here. So I've got myself just on the edge of the distance. Uh, so I'm away from myself, probably about 10 meters, give or take, maybe a little more than that. I've selected myself, I'm starting this, I wait just a little bit longer, and then I get going. You'll see it's tracking me pretty nicely here. Now as part of the Droney, it's pulling back. So now I've got the castle in the background, that's nice. We're increasing in elevation just very slightly here. And it's still tracking me just fine. It's keeping me roughly center-ish kind of frame, but that's not too bad. It's not perfect, but again, that's not too bad. And of course, here is what that shot looks like in all of its glory. Okay, now before we move on a couple more tips, if you're finding this video interesting, just whack that like button right now. It does really help out the video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, so now that we've succeeded on that first one, I'm gonna show you how to keep on layering this further and further. So instead of starting at the side of you, start in front of you a little bit, and now you've got this angle where you can see that it's not only following you, but it's revealing the foreground in front of you, kind of where you're going at the same time. So a really, really cool effect. And again, this worked pretty darn well because I gave it that distance, that uh, speed, and that space to be able to pull off the shot.
But of course, it's easy to get too cocky with this. And so you think you're working fine here. You got the drone in front of you, and you'll find out very quickly that it just doesn't move that fast. Like I had a, a quite a bit of distance there, but I was just simply too close to it. Uh, so this time I stepped back a little bit further and got going. And this actually kind of works. The key though is I gave it an extra like two to three seconds before I started pedaling because I found the first like five or so seconds of this maneuver it goes a lot slower than later on the maneuver. And you can see here this is a very usable shot that you could use for all sorts of interesting B-roll. And in fact, the fact that I go underneath it there could be somewhat interesting if I'd gone a little bit faster and then returning back like this. Now with anything in cinema, you want to go ahead and reveal something to make it most exciting. So exact same concept here. Again, you see I'm ahead of myself slightly, and then I've got the camera set up so as it pulls away from this and pulls back, it's going to go ahead and go higher and higher at the same time going further and further from me, and now revealing that castle and revealing me just sort of pedaling off into the sunset there, I guess the, the ocean or somewhere else. It's, it's a pretty cool shot. Now you don't always have to have the shot appear to be rising. In this case, I make it so the camera looks like it's just simply panning up by doing a droney shot while having it already above me, and that goes ahead and it follows me off in the distance. And again, a super, super awesome shot that looks like something someone would have manually controlled. I mean, this is like actually one of the best shots I think I have, and it doesn't have a castle involved. Now, about this point, you may be asking yourself, what about the rocket? Can I use a quick shot, the rocket, for anything? And I'll just let this clip simply speak for itself. So you see, I'm, I'm following myself, and then boom, just no. Because the whole point of the rocket is to mostly stay still while going straight up and eventually get to up and down, like perpendicular type shot. It just doesn't work very well. In a lot of ways, the same is true of the helix or the spiral. It's like taking the circle concept, but making it worse because of the fact that it's trying to go further and further away from you, but it doesn't seem to work. I've tried a whole bunch of different variations of it, and Generally speaking, unless you just happen to like have a happy fail, it doesn't really work out. So what's a happy fail, you ask? Well, it's like this. So this is a circle shot I did where so far you're like, ah, oh, this isn't too shabby. It's tracking fine. But what you don't realize, it's actually not tracking anymore. At this point, it's just gone off the reservation. And you see, but it reveals the castle. So in some ways, this shot is totally usable as B-roll, even though from a tracking standpoint, it was technically a complete and total failure. This isn't limited to just cycling. You could do it for uh, walking or running or even driving with a car if you draw a square around it. In this case, you do have to figure out where to put the controller. In my situation, I just ran with it. Um, or you could technically live there if it's allowed in your jurisdiction. Now I'll go ahead and leave you with one final shot here. Uh, by the way, in all these shots, I've got the controller on my handlebars. I'll show you that in just a second there. Uh, it's all attached using a little quad lock mount. But you can see Droney pulling back, tracking me around the corner, and the windmill reveal for the win. Now, of course, why this is interesting to me is I'm generally by myself, so I want to get my own shots of myself. So I need that actor track or similar type mode. If you've got a bunch of friends that can go and do paparazzi style for you, then awesome. You keep on doing you and, and all is grand. So you can see here I've got the cell phone strapped with rubber bands to the controller, and the cell phone then is attached to the bike using a standard quad lock mount. Uh, so it just works super well, it's easy to use, and it keeps the controller nice and locked on my handlebars. Okay, so there you go, a complete look at how to do actor track on the Mavic Mini or how to fake it anyways. Fake it till you make it, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, overall it works fine. You just got to understand how to do it right. Uh, is it the best drone for active tracking or any sort of tracking type stuff? Of course not. It doesn't have that feature in it. But if you're in a pinch and if you know how to use the kind of tips and tricks, then you can get some of that B-roll shot that you might need, um, or you get that little Instagram shot that is pretty epic looking. Anyways, if you found this interesting, again, whack that like button at the bottom there, or hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.